Innovate Biopharmaceuticals is a publicly traded company, and as you can see here, uh, we have to have a forward-looking statement. None of these things may come to pass. They may come to pass. This is uh, required. And as you all know, celiac disease is inherited autoimmune condition, and it's a great masquerader. These symptoms are diverse. They happen all the time. They're really tough. They make life difficult. And I've been with patients all over the world, listening and caring and seeing what we might do to help. And so early on, we did some market research with patients globally. And we asked them, what does having celiac disease mean to you? And if you can take a look here on the gluten-free diet, it, it leads to isolation. And, and you're pretty good when you're at home, but when you go outside, it's the pits. You have to explain that diet over and over to everyone. You can't join in at the wedding and have the wedding cake. The picnic down the block is really tough, and it's really hard every single day and every time food touches your mouth. And um, the other thing that patients uh, wrote about is not feeling like yourself. So this is you normally, but when you've been glutened, <laughs> this can be what you can turn into. <laughs> and that's not a fun place to be. And um, so many patients have related to these drawings. So lorazotide acetate is potentially the first drug to market for patients who have celiac disease. And it will be indicated for the relief of GI symptoms in celiac disease patients who are on a gluten-free diet but not controlled completely on their gluten-free diet. Uh, there is nothing approved globally for celiac disease, no medicine whatsoever. And that's for the 21.5 million patients who have this disease globally. It's tough. There's a lot of patients. This is a small peptide. It's a natural amino acid peptide. It's taken prior to each meal. And what it does is it closes tight junctions in the gut. And what it does is it stops the proliferation of cytokines, T cells, B cells, and TTG antibodies that happen when gluten hits that epithelial bed in your gut. It's not systemically absorbed, so it doesn't go into your bloodstream. And we have done 25 toxicology studies on this product. It's very safe. The phase 2B has been completed, and it was the first product to beat the gluten-free diet alone. And phase three has been agreed upon with the FDA. So one year I went to the FDA six times in order to get their agreement on our uh, endpoints and the move forward for phase three. And we have met this primary endpoint. That's extremely important to know. And we have fast track designation from the FDA as there is no medicine that's approved. What that means is a, p a potential of six months to nine months of review by the FDA versus a 12 month review that is pretty normal. We're entering phase three clinical trials this year. So this is the last stage in the development for a medicine for celiac disease. And we will have uh, the two phase three trials and an open label for safety. So what is exciting about lorazotide acetate for me, who's been in drug development my whole career, is that we have conducted the most comprehensive program for celiac disease patients in the world. And we have, created, we have conducted seven clinical trials in 828 celiac disease patients. Two of these studies were for safety. And you can see the number of patients who participated on the right. And as Francisco told you, we also had to make sure that the product worked. So we provided patients in four different studies with a gluten challenge. 2.7 grams of gluten per day, which is like two slices of bread, a lot of gluten. And as I said, patients with celiac disease are my heroes. They, they did not drop out of these trials. They were very resilient. But what we found, uh, in the next trial, too, is um, a newly diagnosed 
trials. So we have done the most comprehensive program you can do for celiac disease. So after doing all of these studies, FDA said, we like your program, we like your medicine, but you really must do a real life drug trial. And that's with patients who are on a gluten-free diet and they're living their lives normally. They're not eating gluten, they're trying their best on a gluten-free diet. So this is what they called a real, real life study. And we conducted that study in 342 patients, and I'm gonna show you some results of that real life study. This is what's required by the FDA in order to get approval of a medicine for celiac disease. So when I came to Alba Therapeutics, there was no endpoint for celiac disease. So that made it very difficult for us to develop a drug. So FDA told us we had to create a celiac disease patient reported outcome which measures symptoms every single day. And this took six long years to develop this patient reported outcome. And it's measured daily. And as you can see, there were a lot of symptoms that patients on a gluten-free diet are still experiencing. And you can see it's very high levels. It's not just a tiny, yucky, small thing. It's very, very bad. So abdominal cramping, abdominal pain, bloating, and gas are the abdominal symptoms. Diarrhea, loose stool, and constipation are the bowel symptoms. And then there's nausea, which happens pretty frequently. Vomiting, which didn't happen very often at all. And surprisingly to us, headache and tiredness were those things that you happen that are not GI, not, not GI symptoms, but you have them on, as you can see, at a high level. So these patients were on a gluten-free diet in the placebo running period, and that's how much symptomatology they were having. So we then did this 12-week clinical trial to see if lorazotide acetate could help relieve those symptoms. And as you can see in the gold bar here, this is the 0.5 milligram dose. That was the lowest dose. We also tested some higher doses. And we found that the 0.5 milligram dose beat the gluten-free diet and placebo, which is the white line, in a statistically significant manner, being the first and only medicine to beat the gluten-free diet and make patients help them feel better while they're living with this disease. We then tested what happens to the abdominal symptoms. So that's abdominal pain, abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas. And here you can see, again, the 0.5 milligram dose had a 50% reduction versus the gluten-free diet alone. And that was six out of 12 weeks. And so that, again, was a very positive result. One of the most important things FDA asked us to look at was what happens to patients who are really sick? So the patient reported outcome is a new instrument that's measuring symptoms every day. And it's got a scale from zero to 10. Zero means I feel really good. 10 means I feel really bad. And what we found, again, with the 0.5 milligram dose, as you started to get more symptomatic with a two, we reduced seven GI symptomatic days out of that 12-week treatment period. But as you got sicker and your scores were three, four, five to seven, we reduced GI symptomatic days by 27 days out of the 12-week treatment period. So that's almost a full month of feeling better and not having those GI symptoms nag at you and bother you the way they were, the, the way they were doing previously. FDA really found this to be important and significant. So efficacy of the 0.5 milligram dose is what we were really now looking forward to for the phase three clinical trials. You can see here that we had a reduction of GI symptomatic days starting at week three. It became statistically significant and worked out through beating that gluten-free diet alone for the 12 week treatment period. We also showed improved GI symptom days. We had that 50% reduction of the abdominal symptoms, those four that I told you about. And interestingly, 
although not statistically significantly, we reduced headache and tiredness at that 0.5 milligram dose. So that tells you that closing those tight junctions in the gut, preventing that gluten from hitting the epithelial, bell, be, epithelial bed in the gut is helping to make patients feel better, even with non-GI symptoms. The FDA also wanted us to look at bowel function, what happens to the diarrhea, loose stools, and constipation. And again, we use the Bristol stool form scale. This is um, a daily patient reported outcome that was created quite some time ago. You have to measure your, your bowel movements. And as you can see, the 0.5 milligram brought the diarrhea and loose stool down toward normal and it brought constipation up towards normal. This was, again, something very positively viewed by the FDA, helping bowel function become more normalized. Now, one of the best markers we have is the serum anti-TTG and DGP antibodies. So one of our worries was we're going to help make patients feel better, but their TTGs are going to go up they're going to be sick, we don't want that, and FDA didn't want that either. And here you can see throughout the 12-week treatment period, we measured TTG antibodies, both IgA and IgG, and DGP. And none of those levels went above positivity, and this again was something that says it's safe, it's effective, it's reducing symptoms, and the serology is not going up, which you don't want it to do. And how was it tolerated? So again, you want to make sure that a medicine doesn't make you feel worse while you're taking it um, versus the gluten-free diet. So here you can see the adverse events that led to withdrawal from the study. Lorazotide acetate uh, was comparable to placebo. So again, making the patients not feel worse, but feeling just as they were on the gluten-free diet alone. So in conclusion, lorazotide acetate is the first medicine to demonstrate superiority versus the gluten-free diet in a two, phase 2B clinical trial of 342 patients. It's the first tight junction regulator that reduced symptoms and met the primary endpoint. It also reduced GI symptomatic days, and there was no increase in serology of anti-TTG or anti-DGP antibodies. And the safety and tolerability of lorazotide acetate has been comparable to placebo in these trials. Our next step is to conduct the phase three clinical trials. If positive, then submit to the agency for approval of a new medicine for patients living with celiac disease who are symptomatic while on a gluten-free diet. So as we know, celiac disease is a challenge every single day we worry and I have to say thank you to all the people I've met. Our last clinical trial had 75 clinical trial sites around the US and Canada, 342 patients and a total of 852 since the development of the product. Please look for our weak character as we move forward to recruit for the phase three clinical trials. He's our little gnarly bad mascot. And thank you all so much for your time, for your attention, and um, for your, your contributions to celiac disease.